Hey guys and welcome to a very exciting video for me. Today we have some new inverts joining our little reptile and bug family. Now these are probably the most expensive isopods that I've ever bought. Now don't worry I'm not spending hundreds here but they get expensive. Um, now before we get into unboxing them I did just want to show you how I set up their boxes because I did this the other day because I was super excited. So these are the boxes I'll be using for the isopods. Now they are quite small, they're the really useful boxes, three litre boxes. Um, however, we have such few individuals that I want to be able to observe them closely and I know from experience that sometimes you can put a few in a big box and you lose them. So um, we're starting off on this and as soon as they need it I'm going to upgrade them. I've already gone ahead and put some ventilation holes in. I prefer to do it down the side because if you happen to have to like I don't know stack them on top of each other you're not blocking anything so uh, it just works well on the side. Now I have in the past put isopods in different types of setups um, and I had this one there was lots of ventilation up the top and they dried out quickly so although this doesn't look very visually interesting or nice I find that boxes like this work well because they hold in so much more humidity which is what the isopods need. Now I'm going to mix up a bunch of substrate, a bunch of things I have lying around that I know work well with my isopods. First I'm adding in some Haberstadt spider bedding. So I got this for my feeder insects because it's great for burrowing and I have since used it with some of my isopods and it works really well. So that is going to be sort of the main substrate in this. Then I'm going to add a sprinkling of Earth Mix Arid only because I need to bulk this out a little bit. I think if you want to choose out of the Arid one or the original I would go with Earth Mix for this. However, I'm just a little bit short on dirt. The next thing I'm going to add is some calcium. So obviously you can give your isopods cuttlefish but I have an abundance of calcium. Like I have a whole big bag of Arcadia's calcium which technically says it's out of date, but we know calcium doesn't go out of date, so I'm using it in here. Next, I'm adding in bark chips. I just find anything with wood really helps. <laughs> this is the stuff that, in my experience, and I have tons and tons of giant orange wood lice who won't stop breeding, this has worked. Now I'm gonna add in a bunch of sphagnum moss and a leaf litter. Now here's the fun, noisy part, is mixing it all together. Yeah, I should have got a bigger bowl. <laughs> this is only going to be enough for like one box. And now I'm going to add some wood. So they tend to like to um, hide under the wood. Usually I use cork and I might get some more cork, um, but this will do for now. And then we're going to add some more leaves. So back to unboxing these, we have two different species. And um, actually, I have already taken a peek because I was surprised by the box size. I thought I was getting a bigger box. Um, but actually, they came in bags. Have you ever seen that before? Maybe that's normal. Um, they have little air holes, but I've never had uh, wood lice or isopods, pill bugs arrive like this. Um, but the first species we have are dairy cows. So I thought I'd show you a close up. Now we have 25 in here, and these weren't the expensive ones, they were about. £7.50, which isn't too bad. Um, they are related to the giant orange uh, isopods I already have, and they're quite chunky. I actually thought they, they would be a bit smaller, but they're nice and chunky. Now, as well as filming here, I do also have isopod cam. You can probably see the uh, tripod here, um, but I thought it would give you a closer look at the isopods when they go in. Now, before I put them in, I'm gonna put in a little bit of custodian fuel. Only a little bit because there are only 25 individuals. So I'm just gonna have to slice this open. There's no sort of delicate way of doing this. Ooh. Look at that. Oh, it's moving too fast. <laughs> now for me, I've always been fascinated with wood lice um, throughout my childhood. And it's just so cool that now, like, there's so many different species, um, exotic species as well that you can um, keep and they do really well like for me I find isopods super easy to look after and um, just enjoyable to watch I 
like <laughs> I would say I'm an isopod breeder I literally do nothing in terms of encouraging them to breed they just breed but um, I do have a lot of the giant orange ones and so I think in the new year I might sell a few so um, me and my boyfriend we started an Etsy page called the bearded shrimp and um, we sell 3D printed stuff on there, plant cuttings and maybe isopods. So I'll leave a link to the shop below if you do want to just at least follow the shop. So if you are interested in isopods and they come up for sale, you'll be the first to know. And who knows, in the future if these guys grow a lot and breed a lot, then these could be available. But yeah, I just find them super fascinating. And now for the second type of isopod and I don't know how well you can see these if anyone can guess what they are but they are related to rubber duckies but they are easier to breed and they are cheaper <laughs> so they are panda king isopods and I only have five individuals here and they cost me five pounds each um, which doesn't sound like a lot but like each little isopod was five pounds. Like to me, that's a lot. But the price of rubber duckies is insane. The price of these on other websites were really high. So I actually found these on eBay and um, you know, it's expensive. It's a bit of an investment, but it's kind of like if you want rubber duckies and you can't afford rubber duckies, this is a good way in to sort of get to know the species and everything. So I am very excited to see how these guys go. In the last one I wasn't going to count all 25 but I'm definitely counting five considering they cost me five pounds each. Even though I say that and I know it doesn't sound a lot, it, it's a lot to me. <laughs> so let's see, we have the first one and what's cute is they roll into balls and they're like white and black or white and grey. I found the second one, so this one is moving about a bit and you can sort of see the stripe. So the white and the grey. I have actually seen orange ones of these about as well. I'm not sure if the orange just randomly appears because it was living with uh, grey and white ones. Oh, just found the third one. Fourth one. Fifth one. So yeah, that's the two new species. I think I'm gonna see a lot more of the dairy cows and I think they'll probably be moving out into a bigger tub soon. Um, but I just wanted to share this with you guys. I know this channel is more about leopard geckos, but I do also keep inverts and other types of geckos and other pets. So it'd be nice to show more of that. Um, and yeah, so if you like this video, make sure you leave a like, a comment, maybe even share it. Um, it just really helps the algorithm and it shows that you guys are interested and helps me decide whether or not to make more videos like this. As I said though, make sure you follow our shop, The Bearded Shrimp, that way if any of these in the future ever come up, if I manage to breed them, I don't know, um, then you'll be first to know. I'm not planning on putting these in my tanks at the moment just because we have such a uh, few individuals that, you know, they could potentially get eaten. Um, but maybe at some point when like there's loads and loads then I will. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe. But thank you for watching guys and goodbye.